there could be a farmer who has never gotten an animal this size on their farm and this is just not a one rabbit that we have here literally basically all our animals look like this uh, let me pull out another one and just show you uh, guys just look at this as well uh, you see how big uh, this rabbit is and this is an earlobe very nice uh, falling ears so we're going to be looking at those things that you must do for you to be able to have this kind of of bunnies uh, guys i know many farmers who want to start rabbit farming and they simply just want to buy a rabbit uh, the size and uh, the weight of your rabbit is literally going to be determined by the genetics of your rabbit so whenever you're going out to buy rabbits try to buy exotic rabbits or purebred rabbits i've also seen some farmers who want to buy a female rabbit which is purebred or exotic and then they want to go and breed it with their local male or some want to buy a, a purebred male and go and breed it with their local rabbit thinking that that kind of combination is going to give them a better looking bunnies so this is my version of the new zealand white the ears are going to be uh, straight up uh, the similar thing is going to be with uh, my chinjiras uh, this is one of my chinjiras and you can see how uh, giant this is looking guys when you have an animal like this one you are rest assured that the offsprings that you're going to get uh, from this of course are going to grow up to be like one uh the perfect example i can show you is uh this rabbit here this is an offspring from that chinjira rabbit which i have just shown you and you see that uh this form of aggressiveness uh let me just uh transfer it and put it here for you uh, guys to be able to see it properly you see that that form of aggressiveness is coming out yeah so that's point number one uh, you having the right breeds and remember guys the start normally defines how you're going to succeed on your farm so don't try to cheat yourself uh, by buying cheap breeds in the name of saving you're going to find out that six months down the road you are literally going to regret why you did not start with the perfect uh, rabbit breeds if you need uh, this kind of breeds we are here to supply you just reach out to us and we will be able to give you this kind of bunnies the second point is going to be how you feed your rabbits our rabbits should eat hay uh 80 percent of the rabbit feed should be made out of hay uh, this is our stock of hay we for us here on the farm we feed uh hay from the star grass and then also we do feed uh this is chloris guyana now chloris guyana and star grass these are very nice uh hay options for your rabbits because they are high in fiber which is what you're looking for but also they have some good quantity of protein uh that's that uh the other key uh, point is going to be uh you can also feed uh, your bunnies on um alfalfa hay uh, alfalfa hay is also going to be very nice for your bunnies uh, the other option is going to be um uh, timothy grass uh, timothy grass is also going to be very nice uh, for your rabbit as well so those are the hay options that you can pick from and hay shouldn't really be something that uh, you're struggling to get uh, if you can't find alfalfa or chloris Ghana, just find any grass cut it and dry it under shade i will have made videos on how you can do your home made hay so that you are able to cut on that cost of feeding that point said is going to lead us to uh, the next point the next point being you guys giving your rabbits full access to clean water for us our rabbits take water through the nipple a water system uh, like you can see that's a jerry can uh, which has uh, some water and on it we connected a tube uh, which now picks that water and supplies it to the rabbit so how do rabbits uh, drink uh, this kind of water whenever the rabbit touches this nipple uh, like this the water will be released this is guys so far the best way you can provide 
are your rabbits unlimited access to water remember guys every time your rabbit chews on the hay uh the hay is being dry it's going to run to the water to drink so whenever you leave your rabbit without water one they may not actually eat the hay then you find that some farmers are saying uh when they put uh hay for their rabbits the rabbits do not actually eat the hay of course the rabbits are going to eat uh, the hay on a slow pace it's not going to be like uh that fast pace where the rabbits just uh, run to eat like they do run to the uh, pellet or the marsh but they are surely going to eat uh the hay now the other key thing that you should do is that you see that this hay we have tied it with uh, this binding wire a uh, reason being that uh, the hay uh, was if you don't tie it then uh, the rabbit is going to scatter it around the cage which does not only waste it but then the rabbit also uh, now starts to uh, put droppings on your hair and contaminating it so that's why we tie it into a bundle like this and we find and stick it somewhere so that the rabbit is unable to move it now uh, guys uh, the other thing that you should do always do is uh, whenever you have a uh, young bunnies like this uh, i've always gotten questions that uh, people are having rabbits uh, give birth uh, but the bunnies uh, just die uh, after a few weeks or when they are almost at winning age now the other key thing that you must do to survive your bunnies is going to be uh, some people have feeders which are as big as this okay uh, of course these kind of feeders they are good uh, because the rabbits cannot spill the feed but you see that the bunnies cannot actually fit into the feeder without uh, one of them jumping into the feeder and when that happens it means that the rest of the rabbits will be blocked from accessing feed so what should you do at this point and the way you see that uh, this feeder is really tall that the bunnies cannot reach the feed when they are standing on the floor of the cage so in that case what do you do uh what you do is you need to buy a small feeder like this one okay you see that when i put feeds in this feeder the rabbits are going to just reach the feed while they are standing down no one should really jump into the dish to be able to reach uh, the feed. And you could be wondering, what am I feeding? Uh, this is my mash, okay? Uh, this mash is made out of um, a wheat bran. Uh, wheat bran being very high in fiber content, and that's what your young bunnies need to be able to grow well and also to avoid having any gut issues. Uh, the wheat bran, I mix it with the starter feed for chicken. So I mix that with the starter feed for chicken. And if you're wondering in what ratio, I do a ratio of 3 to 1. So that's the ratio which I am using for my bunnies. And with this kind of feed, I've been able to realize a high survival rate for my bunnies. Now you see that that problem, we have literally fixed it of the bunny jumping into the feeder and blocking the rest from eating the feed. Uh, also, when it does jump into the feeder, then it can also contaminate uh, the feed by putting droppings in there. And you see that these rabbits are eating the mash and that's how you are going to be able to cut also on the cost of feeding, but also assuring that you are feeding quality feed another important thing that you're going to need for you to be able to grow out your rabbits very well is going to be multivitamin guys uh, you see that this is a bottle of the multivitamin which i use and you can see the different vitamins that are in this kind of bottle so this is going to be very important for your farm uh, so you should create a routine when you administer this multivitamin on your farm that way you're going to keep your rabbits healthy and then you are going to have your rabbits growing into really huge bunnies now the other key aspect that you shouldn't forget 
is going to be breeding at the right age. Now, this is a challenge because a lot of people jump into rabbit farming and they want to grow big really fast. So what they end up doing is that they end up breeding their rabbits more than they should be doing because they just need to get bunnies very fast. So that way you find that guys are breeding rabbits which are young, which are about four months, five months, uh, simply because the rabbit is uh, able to get bred and give birth to bunnies shouldn't mean that you should breed it. For us, we recommend that you should wait for at least six months for you to be able to breed your rabbit. And you can see this rabbit here. Uh, the way you see it here, it has never been bred and it has not given birth yet. But you find that uh, literally for someone else, uh, the rabbit of this size is literally what has given birth to their entire farm. And then you find that the rabbits are just small bunnies and you can't really do much with them. So that's going to be very key uh, for you to wait on your bunnies until they are of the right age and the right weight. For us, we breed our rabbits when they are at least three and a half kgs. Three and a half kgs, you know that it's going to give you decent size bunnies. If you have watched the video this far, guys, please consider subscribing to the channel. Turn on the notification bell so that the next time we upload the video, you are notified to come and watch with us. Otherwise, guys, catch you in the next video.